OpenAI yesterday announced support of MCP servers to Agents SDK. So Agents SDK is their new agentic framework. What I want to do in this video is I want to go through a simple example just to demonstrate to you what this is about. This is not going to be an intro to MCP. There's a lot of really good content out there. But the idea with MCP is that you have now a standardized way to connect AI tools to different data sources and tools. And this is helpful if you can use it within your agentic framework because then you can leverage the capabilities of the framework to connect with all these different tools in a standardized way. So there are two types of servers that are supported, the standard IO and then HTTP over SSE. So this is more about running things locally and, and connecting to servers that run remotely. So they have two of these classes here, MCP server STDIO, MCP server SSE. So we're going to be using this one as the example. And in fact, what we're going to do is we're going to use this MCP file system server as the example for the demo that I'm going to show you. So this is just a snippet of the code. Here is just a snippet of when you set up an instance of an agent, how you would integrate that MCP server. So this is how you do it. You can provide it a list because you can provide many MCP servers and each one of those servers will have like a list of tools, right? So you can also get access to those tools. So this is just more about caching, running things more efficiently just to avoid any kind of latency hit. You can enable this one, actually enable this one by default. And then here are some more examples. The good thing about the agents is the case that tracing is supported out of the box. So you actually can enable tracing for the MCP related calls. So all of the information like the tools that it uses. So for instance, for the file system server, you have all of these tools like read file and so forth. So I'll give you an example of this as I go through the demo. I'm going to show you how useful this is to basically debug how your agent or agentic system is leveraging the MCP servers, what are the tools that are being used and so forth. So having visibility on that is quite useful when you're developing with agents and now even more useful for things like MCP servers. So let's go to the actual example. This is the script that I've prepared to demonstrate the MCP server connected to the agents SDK framework from OpenAI. And I have a bunch of scripts here also that I showed during the webinar that we did this week. So if you want access to that, let me know. We have that available also for people that want to learn about the agents SDK. Anyway, so the agent MCP.py, basically what it does is going to try to use that file system server, that's MCP server. And what we're doing here is we're setting up an agent Right, so the name of the agent is an assistant. You can give it whatever assistant name here. And then basically we tell it in the instructions, use the tools to read the file system and answer questions based on those files. I always use those files to answer the user's questions. I, think, I guess this is repeated, but anyways, I think that helps enforcing things. And then here I selected the model. By default, it's going to use, I think, the latest checkpoint of GPT-40. But if you want a more capable model for things like this, then you could use something like Ultra Mini. This one is one of the faster reasoning models from OpenAI. And by the way, I did get better results using this model compared to the default model that they use. So experiment with both and see what works best for your particular queries and tasks. All right, so everything looks to be working here. The OpenAI API key, I've set that already. That's in my .env here. And then here are some of the queries that I'm going to pass it. Notice here that I'm passing the MCP servers, MCP server here. And where do I call this function? Let me go to that function down here. Uh, it's going to be right here. So this file system example. And basically here we get the current directory. And again, it's just checking if it exists. And then it creates a sample file. So the sample file has been created right here. And I'll show you what the sample file contains. Well, you can see what it contains right here. It has a list of my favorite books and a list of my favorite songs. And so based on those, I'm going to ask the system some questions or ask the agents some questions like, for instance, what are my favorite books or what are my favorite songs? Something very simple. And in fact, what we're also going to do here is we're going to leverage the fact that this particular file system server has the ability to also edit the file. So we'll be able to edit the file and do a lot of different file operations. Anyway, so here we create STDIO based MCB server for the file system access. So this is the instance right here. And here are the parameters. So if you have been using MCP servers, you would know exactly what this command is. So I'm not going to go through that. And these are just the arguments. You can see the samples directory. This is what we're getting from right here. So these are things that are necessary for this to actually work. And then here is just the caching stuff, as I was saying. This is for latency purposes. And this one is for tracing. So you can see here we're doing some tracing. And this is useful for debugging, as I mentioned. So we're going to look at the traces as well, which is supported out of the box with this agent's SDK. So we will be able to look at traces from our dashboard. 
All right, so right here, finally, we say trace, and then we have the available tools. So every time we'll print the tools, and right here you see it. And then finally, we run agent with servers. We pass a server, so this server instance right here. And again, look at the instance that I'm using, which MCP server stdio. So that is what's passed to this particular function right here. You can see it there. And then here, obviously, this can be a list of servers, but we're only using one here. If you're using multiple, you will pass them here. And now the agent has access to all of that. It has access to the file system. So that means it can look at the files in this particular folder and be able to answer questions. Some of the questions that we want to ask the model or the agent here is list all the files you can access. So this is just a quick test to see if it can access the folder and files. And what is my favorite number one book? So favorites.txt, when it's written, it looks something like this, okay? So here you can see my favorite books, my favorite songs, and obviously we'll create this file. So. It will create it from scratch again. Again, this could be any file because it's going to look at the folder. It's going to look at all the files and it's going to use what it needs. So that's the cool thing about building with agents is that you get some of those capabilities out of the box and the obviously the MCP server has everything already standardized for you and you can just leverage those tools. This question here is what are my favorite songs? Based on my favorite songs, suggest a new song I might enjoy. So this is just testing to see if it, if it can actually read what's in the favorites that TXT file. And then I forgot to add a book to the list. Can you add this new book? So it will try to add. So we're testing to see if we can actually edit files. And we can check in the tracing tool to see whether it actually does that. So that will be the interesting experiment here. All right, so that's about it. And then here, finally, we activate here runner.run, and then we pass the agent, and then we pass the query. So we are just doing that in a loop through all the queries right here. This is ready to be run. I'm going to go here and then go to Python agent. Right, something like that. Then I'm gonna run this. Oh, let me just close this file here. Yeah, it's just gonna run through this. It's gonna do a quick demonstration of that. The allowed directory is just gonna be this. So it's gonna be this folder here. And then you can see this is the tracing stuff here. The available tools, these are the available tools. It's printing out. But again, you will see that this also appears in the traces. And then here it says running the queries. So list all the files you can access. That's the first query. It says I have access to the following file. So we know that that part is working already. That's cool. We don't see what exactly, which tool it actually used, but that's something that we can look at under the traces tool. Then now it's going to go to the second one. Okay, so it went into this one here. What is my number one favorite book? It says your number one favorite book is the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. If you look at the file here, you will see that it has that as a number one. Okay, so in a way, this is like a little rack system that we have implemented where we are extracting some information. But because the model has that within the context, it can answer questions, right? It can read the file, it can answer questions about the file, and so on. So it's a very simple retrieval system that we have built based on the file system. All right, so this one right here says, what are my favorite songs? And the response from the agent is based on your favorite file, your favorite songs are these. So I believe those are the ones that are included right here. So we know that's working. And then I told it based on my favorite song, suggest a new song I might enjoy. Okay, the favorite song is going to be this one. So it's going to be that one. And then it's going to suggest imagine, stay with to heaven, uh, comfortably numb. Okay, those are good suggestions. And then finally it says, the query is, I forgot to add a book to the list. Can you add When Bread Becomes Ear by Paul Kalaniti? By the way, great book. I suggest everyone to check out that book if you haven't. And then it says, okay, I've added the book to your list of favorite books. So let's go to favorites and you can see that it's listed right here. So we know all of that works. Now, if we want to debug this, if we want to actually know what happened behind the scenes, then we go to our tracing tool. Let's go to our tracing tool here. So this is the tracing tool. And this is again from OpenAI. You need to have a paid account and you access the traces right here. So I'm going to go to this one. This one is the one that I just run. So this is the agent I just ran just now with all of those queries. So it has, okay, assistant, assistant. Let me just put this more to the corner here. Now I can load more just to see everything. I mean, it did a couple of calls. I think it was like five different queries. So it definitely did a lot of calls. Okay, so that's the end of it. All right, so this is the first one. So let's look at the first one here, right? It gives you a drill down of what happened, right? So it lists the MCP tools. What is this about? Well, you can see how it listed all of those right here. And then it made a request to the model the model that's using O3 Mini right here. And you can see the instructions, you can see the input, and you can see the function calls that happen behind the scenes. So this one is just to list the allowed directories, which is exactly what we pass to the server when we created that instance. So you can see that the call is right here. So all the details are there. It even shows you the time. So this one, again, is another call, and then it's going to finally give you an output. All right, so you can go through each one of the calls that happen for that particular run. And again, the second one is the same. The third one is the same here. You can go through all the details when you run this yourself. But I want to show you the last one here, 
the fifth one that we ran the query. That one was interesting because not only did we search the files, we had to list the directory, we had to read the file, and then we had to edit the file, right? So in the edit the file, what we did was we added that additional book, right? So when Brett becomes ear by Paul Kalaniti, so that book was added to the file. So that is what happened exactly. And that's why we got the file to be edited with that new book. That's great. And okay, this is just gonna be the last one. So those are all the functions. And then again, you can see here what's going on. So it has the function call will be the search files. And then finally, this is just a pad, the pattern and so forth. So this is quite complicated if you are trying to build this yourself. This is why I think MCP has a lot of potential in the sense that all of these things are being standardized, right? How you connect these things with agents and leverage all of these built-in tools, right? All of these tools, for instance, in your file system. And I think this has a lot of potential in that sense that, you know, you don't need to build things over again and you can just leverage them. Now, if you want to add more functionalities on top of this, then again, that will depend on the application that you're building. Anyways, that's just a little bit about the MCP support in the agent SDK. We will continue to build more content around this. And in fact, I'm already working on another demo for MCP with this agents SDK library, where I will demonstrate how to like read PDFs and maybe interact with PDFs, like research papers and things like that. So that's just another example that I'm working on. Um, stay tuned for that. I'll see you all in the next one.